Good morning. And uh, before I do anything else, happy Mother's Day to my mother up in heaven, to my daughter with her cho three children, and of course, all the mothers of the world. And this is Tom Padula from Tom Padula TV on YouTube and Insegna Booksellers. And this morning is very special because we are celebrating uh, mothers all over the world. And they do they are the, the, the salt of the earth, they say, because um, they really and truly look after us. Uh, uh, and they remain with us uh, forever, whether on earth or in paradise, where they belong, uh, they look after us. Uh, we always think of them. It's, it's that uh, bond that, that it's uh, incredible. And, you know, even sometimes some mothers don't do the right thing. They're still mothers. Uh, deep down, uh, it's, it's an incredible, it's an incredible strong bond between mother and son, mother and daughter. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's there. It's there. So we love you all. That's for sure. Okay, now this morning is special because for a number of reasons. One of the main reasons is that I have finished the reading of Dante Alighieri, L'Inferno. I wasn't going to just start Purgatorio straight away. I think this is a lesson presentation number 35. I might go on for a little while. On I want to sort of dwell on 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 this uh, on this work that has been written about and analyzed and by people for centuries some great minds behind it and I don't pretend to be anywhere near any of these people but I do my own thing uh, in my own way and um, how would you read the inferno now, there's a little introduction here that says the ideal, well, I'm not going to do it now yet because I've got my 25 minutes, my five minutes first before I start at 11.30 exactly. And welcome, Francis Gallo. So this morning uh, is, uh, is somewhat important uh, because there will be, I think I'll give it up to, let's say, less than 40, you know, I'll give it a half a dozen or five, or five is a good number, uh, five more lessons um, relating to the Inferno, but this time looking at it as a whole, as a, as a universal work. And then I will start on Purgatorio and give myself uh, a break from, uh, from just reading the, the Canti as, as Dante, as Dante wants us to do, I'm sure. It was a work that was that you know belongs to humanity as a whole, uh, regardless of religion, because he was in the middle of of the middle in the in the Middle Ages, uh, just before uh, we, with him, you know, he sort of he's starting to get a, a whiff of the Renaissance, uh, because after that time, uh, the 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 church. It was very strong and remained so for centuries afterwards as well. But then people sort of started to relax a bit more as the centuries went by. And so this work here is, uh, what, 700 years old. Long time. 720. It reputed to have started the work or began the work in the uh, on Good Friday of, of, the thir of, the, of April in the 13th century. In 1300. Now, I will do that. Then I will also read a couple of my poems from my chapter on schools. Uh, good one. Last last week I finished off with Luchikio di Speranza uh, when I finished the, the reading of Canto 34, uh, which was appropriate in a way to, to the work as well. And then after that, uh, I thought uh, I did the songs uh, last week and... This week I went back uh, to my archives here and this, there was Angelo there, Angelo Marquez, who's passed away, Colin, uh, who is um, a musician, you know, he's Scottish uh, and a violin player, 
and I met him and I said, you know, would you like to come and meet these two musicians, Angela and Dora? And we did one night and um, I will be, we will be entertained by them today uh, with, um, you know, what they did best, with pure music. Uh, the the Fisharmonica, but there was also a violin and a mandolin as well. So it's a, it's a wonderful... I look forward to it, actually, because I haven't heard this for quite a while. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and it's good to, to be able to recall a, a few things from what I've done and the people I've met, really. So it's good. So it's 11.30, let me start. Okay. Here we go. The ideal way of reading the Divine Comedy would be to start at the first line and go straight through to the end, surrendering to the vigour of the storytelling and the swift movement of the verse, and not bothering about any historical allusions or theological explanation which do not occur in the text itself. That is how Dante himself tackles his subject. His opening words plunge us abruptly into the middle of a situation. Midway this way of life we bound upon, so nel mezzo del cammino di nostra vita mi ritrovai per una selva oscura. Okay. Now, this particular uh, author uh, says you shouldn't, you should read it. You know, I say you should read Dante. I think you should read anything really straight away without bothering about uh, the underlying meanings of uh, the works. And uh, the reason for that is simple. It's always, we always need to, uh, the walk in the park. You know, I did um, the Italian lessons. And when I started, I, I thought I'll do the grammar, okay? So, and then, I, but I started with a, a saying, la pratica batte la grammatica. So in other words, the practice. So you need to practice first. Uh, whatever you're doing, you, you need to practice, you need to start. So it's la pratica, you know, if you want to learn something, you might as well just go into it and then then the, the, the theory will, is behind it all. And when you then get to know the theory, you uh, begin to understand where you're, where you're at. So in the terms of the Inferno, reading the, Dan, the, the Canti 1 to 34, without bothering about the fact that you can't understand what Dante is saying because of the language. It's a difficult language. But here and there, there are some bits that uh, I found quite easy to understand. And I think you would too. If you know, you know, if, you're a, if you are an advanced student of Italian, the best way to tackle Italian is to actually go into the literature and then... Uh, work your way, wade your way through. So if you've got the backing of the grammar, then things become easy. So the backing of the reading of Dante Alighieri is the first reading of the work. Now, when I start Purgatorio, I have not read Purgatorio. I can tell you this now. I cannot, I have not read Purgatorio or Paradiso. They were too high for looting for me. Now, because I'm in, in the third age, it's probably time for me to, to do this and to actually appreciate some of these classical works because they don't just come like that. These are life's work of very important and intelligent people uh, and people with, uh, you know, a lot, of, um, a lot of literary background as well. You can't just write La Divina Commedia, the Commedia. Uh, you, you, you have to do it, you have to do it uh, through practice. I mean, I've been writing now since non-stop, since 1969, 1970, early, no, early, the late 69, when I found out that, um, you know, uh, I had missed out on my law subjects. Uh, and I wanted to know why, and that's why I started then. But before that, I also had written a few things, but for school. So you always ask to do this or that, you know, uh, in schools, uh, you, uh, as an essay or whatever. So really this idea of writing and of developing the written form 
has gone on from the beginning of life for me in terms of when you first got to school. Now, these days, and I've seen it with my grandchildren, we start them off at the age of, put a pen in there, uh, you know, as soon as they're born, literally, as soon as they can hold a pen or they can hold something or a book, come. Children need to touch books, need to feel them. There's a lot, and that's how the learning starts, and it goes on throughout life. That's the background. Before we do anything else, we've got a background in that. So that the background is important. And that's where parents come in and uh, people, uh, who, relatives, uh, whoever, just get a child and get a book or something, uh, play a game, you know, computer games. People criticise too much screen time, this and that. Yeah, but what do we do now in today's world? We've got a lot of screen time. And... Uh, the inferno is also available, of course, online. But when you have a book, you have books like this this thick, uh, that's when you really begin to... And the notes that go there, and there's other books. And then you get the Aid by Virgilio, something like this. You're starting to look at... You're starting to look at... Uh, and then you look at, you know, the translations... So what I'm saying is that studying Dante Alighieri is, is, is an important work. For, third age, for people in the third age, it's actually a very good company as well. Okay, so we know that from the, the past two years. So the, 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 the other thing that I want to talk about Dante today is his life. He didn't just write the Commedia, he also did other works. And he was, you know, uh, he, he, did, he had a job to do. And when he did it, there was a, a sort of political, bureaucratic job for Firenze. Uh, he got involved into, you know, when you, when you get these jobs, in, sometimes they come to you uh, because you're good at something, but also because other people believe, uh, they, they think that you, you're a capable person and you can contribute. And they can, can I use the word, use you up. The politicians, that's what they need to do. You know, now in, in the election mode, look at what's happening now on our television screen. You think it was any different in 1300 or, you know, uh, in Dante's time? He was born in 1265. In those years after, when he was 20, let's say. So we're looking at, you know, uh, 1285. But before that, they used to grow up a lot earlier uh, because they were basically, uh, uh, you know, they were basically in the streets, you know, in communities. Florence, you know, little citadel of the Middle, middle Ages. There's a lot of um, community life. And people talk to each other and they, everyone wants to know. And then, then there, there were the rulers there. So they kept a good look at... Uh, the population under their guidance or their governance. governance. So Dante suffered from that. His, uh, his life wasn't easy, really. And I'll, I'll be looking at not just his life, we'll also look at his other works. What else did he do? Okay, so, for example, now, what was, what was for him, what was in his own mind there, when he tackled the, uh, the, this particular... He was, no, he, he was, what, 30, in El Mezzo del Camino di Nostra Vita. He was born in 1265, he's 1300. So when he was 35 years old, he had made... Uh, there was trouble in the air, and he says, OK, I, I'm going to start some sort of work. I think I've got a divine inspiration. Uh, so... Not only did he write, he narrated his journey in the afterlife, in the in the world of the afterlife, inferno, uh, hell, purgatory, paradise. But then, at the time, the church was very powerful, and of course, they were also interested in temporal power, not just divine power, spiritual power, but the temporal power. In other words 
Rome was also, uh, all the lands around it were also part of the Vatican. Uh, the state, it was a state. So the Pope had to not only look after his flock in a religious sense, but he also had to look after his citizens as well. And if people didn't agree with him, guess what? He had the soldiers, the army. You think he didn't use it? Of course, where did the Crusades come from? I've been watching um, After All Resurrection. Uh, that's, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I have to say it. It's, it's, it's the, ter the beginning of the Ottoman Empire. Before them, there was the Seljuk Empire. And uh, you, sort of, you see through this um, uh, particular big series, a series of five, there are five series uh, covering the 1300s in the middle, in uh, in Turkey, and so and, and the Seljuk Empire almost went to uh, the beginnings of where India is. So it's a very big and powerful empire, and uh, you know slowly but surely, of course, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And that's what happens. Uh, you know, you can't control big empires unless you give other people something to do, uh, unless you give governance to other to other sections of of the land. So uh, the tribes, the Turkish tribes, and this. So where, why am I saying this? Because Dante was doing the same thing with his own uh, with his own life. He was becoming erudite. It became, you know, he knew, for example, about the history of Florence, you know, what, both the earlier ones and, the, and in his own time. And then he had, he, he had read some of the classics. He knew about Homer, Virgil. He admired Virgil because Virgil, and then I'll, I'll be seeing La Figura di, di, di Virgil. Why did he choose Virgil to be his uh, companion up there? But before you get to Virgil, you, you know, the, in the first few lines, you almost get the first few lines says here, it, it, it says um, that that c'è una selva oscura. Huh? Collocata in un sito indeterminato dell'emisfero boreale, forse presso la montagna di Sion. So we are in Israel, Palestine. In un indeterminato emisfero boreale. So in other words, uh, the, the, the upper part of the earth. This, the, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. It was in the, in the northern hemisphere, boreale. Okay? That's... Um, that's the northern part. Now, when did he write it? Not the 7 April, mattino del 8 April, 1300. He didn't write the whole thing then. He thought about it and he started it then. Anno del primo giubileo indetto da Bonifacio VIII, Boniface VIII. Where Dante went with his uh, people from Florence to... Uh, to do some important political work for Florence. But whilst he was away, things changed in Florence and he, he found himself on the wrong side of the political spectrum. E venerdì santi. So, so giovedì e venerdì santi. Thursday and Friday. Okay. Uh, the, the, we've read, now I have read Dante Ligue. Canti 1, 2, 34. I don't need to do that again yet. But now I want to go further in this Selva Selvaggia and um, allow me and you to actually think about this. What does it mean to study La Divina Commedia, Purgatorio, and Paradiso to follow? But we're doing, we're doing hell. We've done it. So, what do you mean by nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita? And the guy says, oh, you can't. <laughs> so, you, you're sort of lost, aren't you? You're lost. And then, whilst you're lost, it's very dark. 
you know, sleepy, etc. And then at once you, you sort of wake up somewhere else and you see this um, light on top of the mountain. A light. What a light coming from the skies, the up there. Uh, and then he says, oh, well, from the darkness, you want to move into the light. But as you move up, you meet three beasts. <laughs> you meet these three beasts. And they don't let you go up. Okay, so let's have a look. We ourselves have got two paths. We can go this way. This way or that way. We can do the right thing or we can do the wrong thing. It's up to us to choose. We've got free will to choose. God is smart. He says, you're not going to blame me for your... Because a lot of people talk about destiny. It's already written in the book. But, you know, in the Middle Ages, that, that sort of idea says, no, 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 you can't do that because you've got to follow certain rules. You know, that's where the politics of the church come in. You have to do what we say. Basically, because we want to direct you into the right path. You know, we want peace, harmony, etc. They say, you know, they say they really believe in sort of poverty, chastity and obedience. Now, let's look at poverty. And then you look at the church in the Middle Ages. Very powerful. Riches beyond belief. Look at all the artworks that came out of them. They used to employ artists etc so poverty is good yeah you, don't, you know if you're poor it doesn't matter God will give you grace because you know you're suffering therefore you'll get your reward further up in paradise okay that's one chastity yeah beautiful that's another one so if you work for us you're not allowed to <laughs> To marry whatever, but then you know, some of the popes had little parties, etc. Not all of them, but I mean, I don't know. But you know, the suspicion is, and the facts are that some of them had mistresses as well. Not all, again, there was the saintly one, but within the church, there's always somebody behind the scenes, never in front. And of course, because they had power. They want you to be quiet about it. Keep it under the carpet. So in, in these days, day and age, things are coming, you know, because of the media, they're coming out in big time. It's not that people didn't know them. Just people just kept quiet about it because the, the, the power of the, gov the governing powers were, were very, very strong and very, very rough. They would eliminate you if you did something that, you know, would make them lose face or lose their power. But eventually, uh, you know, in the, in the hands of enemies, uh, that that could happen. So that's chastity. Well, let, let's have a look at the other one. Uh, what was it? Um, poverty, chastity and uh, charity. Hello, Angela. Uh, yes, coming up. Uh, char charity. So look at that. Be generous. Be generous. And so, have you been to church and you ever received a cent? you you got to give because you contribute. It's like we contribute to the empires, to the, to the state. Why do we contribute? Because they're going to make roads, they're going to do this, that, that. But whilst they're at it and they're collecting all the money from everyone, some of it, you know, they pay themselves good salaries, et cetera, et cetera. So the, these are things that occur, have occurred in the past and are occurring right now. And the three beasts represent, sorry, your local, you know, your local council, the local state, the regional council, whatever. And the, the lion, that's the hyena, different spots on the, you know, Michael Art. In other words, uh, you can't, there's a lot, lots of spots on that at the local level that you have to manage. Then there is the lion. 
the power, the, you know, the, the, the government. And of course, then there is Lupa Magra, the, the, the she-wolf, always hungry, but greedy is the word. That's what stops you along the way. And if you're young, uh, it's a messy affair being young. Now, I've always said that, uh, really, uh, how is when you are young, because you experience all sorts of things. Life throws all sorts of things at you. And if you survive at all, you get to middle, to, you get to middle age. And, you know, at this time here, 35, more or less the beginning of middle age, beginning to question certain things. So, who's Virgilia? Virgilia is someone who can sort of help you work your way through uh, the messy part. So how do we do that today? For example, if you get, the, you know, early middle, you're in business. Well, you need the lawyer, you need the accountant, you need this, you need that. So all these people here, uh, like Virgilia, they, gotta, uh, they can help you go through the, all the troubles that you can meet along the way in society. But how do you, what do you have to retain for yourself? Well, you have to retain the idea that you want to be good, that you want to follow, you want to do the right thing by other people. That's what it is. Is that la via, you know, which way do you go? This way or that way? So if you're not conscious of what you're doing, very likely you'll fall into a trap. And you can do the wrong thing by thinking that you're doing the right thing. Or you say, well, if I, if I you know, get rid of that guy there, then I won't have any more problems. And that's where the crime comes on. But we've got free will. We've got to choose. So we get the Virgils of this world to help us out and move towards. But you have to keep, you have to keep an eye on them too. And so, and so what's the situation here? Is that if you do the right thing, then you will slowly move to a state where you can purgare, you know, you can get rid of the guilt that one accumulates over, over time and slowly move towards a state of peace. In other words, la terza età, you know, in paradise. And then as you move into terza età, the further up you go, the more understanding you have, but the less power you actually have. Your body starts to go weak, and, but your spirit becomes stronger because with each passing year, you, if you are conscious of it, uh, you do become stronger, spiritually speaking. That's why they say, oh, wisdom. But it's not always true. Because some older people haven't, they haven't done the purgare. They haven't done it. You have to be conscious of your actions and you have to want to do the right thing. So if you don't do the right thing, then you go in the wrong path. So that's sort of the idea of Dante. Now, Virgilio, let's have a look at Virgilio, what here they say about Virgilio, okay? Uh, I've got to find it. I, I had it before. Where, where is it gone now? Virgilio, Virgilio. Okay, here we go. Let me read it in Italian, okay? La figura del poeta latino presenta nella descrizione dantesca molteplici aspetti da cui scaturisce il suo ruolo di guida di Dante stesso fino alle soglie del paradiso. So that's his role. He's going to accompany Dante to the doors of paradise. Virgilio rappresenta il modello letterario per quanto riguarda lo stile. So he wrote the Aeneid. And I showed you, and that Dante knew about this work, and they admired him, see? 
Il saggio che nelle sue opere, in particolare l'Enaide, prefigura simbolicamente il viaggio dell'uomo verso la salvezza. So in there, he says, if you, there is a, a journey in the afterlife as well, or, you know, the way you conduct yourself in life towards salvation. Enea, infatti, Enea, uh, that's in the Enaide, viaggia da Troia, from Troy that was burnt down by the Greeks, verso l'Italia, towards Italy, after they lost, dove fonda l'Impero Universale di Roma, where he, he was responsible, in a way, for, before Romulus and Remus, basically, it's sort of the idea uh, that, you know, the Roman Empire had to come from somewhere, so there's credit here to Enea, because he came from Greece and established a colony near Naples, and then, I don't know, what happens after? Voluta da Dio, wanted by God. Oh, hello, Maria Luiz, Luzzi Scalpelli, welcome, welcome. Uh, what I'm doing now is just talking about Dante's Inferno, because so I've read um, Canti 1 to 34. They are podcasts, they're podcasts, and therefore you can listen to them okay, uh, by going down this Facebook page or by going to insegna.com and uh, you got to the blog section. I've said it many times, so if you actually start, uh, you'll get there eventually to my other spots where you can look it up on online. So, Enea infatti viaggia da Troia verso l'Italia dove fonda l'impero universale di Roma voluto da Dio per il riscatto degli uomini dalla schiavitù del peccato. La schiavitù del peccato. That's what we do wrong. So we're enslaved by our own sins. Dante, come altri intellettuali del Medioevo cristiano, so he was in, regarded as an intellectual, Dante, vide in lui, he saw in eh, Virgilio, il profeta dell'avvento di un salvatore. He, because in the night it talks about someone who's going to come from, uh, from the universe, from God, yeah? and to save the world, to save humanity. Per quello che egli aveva scritto nella quarta ecloga, Ok, eccetera, che lo lucrerà. E perciò gli affida il compito di annunciare l'opera riformatrice del Veltro. Il Veltro is eventually, it comes to earth and sort of uh, is the right governor, becomes the, the right governor for all people. And again, il Veltro, we have got to come up to and explain that eventually, a bit more. Virgilio è soprattutto l'uomo, is a man, che ha sperimentato i limiti della ragione. He experienced the limits of reason, non illuminata dalla fede, which is not enlightened by faith, because, you know, they didn't believe in, the Christians only believed that their faith was the one that, gave your soul the shine uh, that you required. So if you have faith in the Christian, Christian, but if you don't have that, or you were born before Christ, you didn't have that, uh, that uh, ragione illuminata. You didn't know what to do, really. You, did, you know, because people, they took revenge people, whereas in the Christian tradition is, you know, you have to forgive, you have to be good, this and that. And then what did the Pope do? Some of the Popes in the Middle Ages, they did the Crusades. And they were very rough. And that's the way I see it in my, uh, in the after all resurrection. Uh, but it's seen from more from a, a Muslim point of view or cultural point of view. But, you know, the... When I looked at crusades in general, the other side is the rough one, not our one, our side. Uh, <laughs> you, you've got to look at both sides and other sides as well. 
So la fede illumina. Faith gives you the power of understanding of what to do and how to do it right. E ne soffre le conseguenze dopo, e ne soffre le conseguenze. Dopo la morte egli raggiunge la certezza del vero Dio. After you die, you, you know for sure uh, who the God is. Ma perché non battezzato? But because he wasn't baptized, he remains excluded from the elected ones and the Christian salvation, which is paradise. So, Regil is placed at the beginning of the work. Even before the first, you enter, you enter hell. But he knew he had gone through hell and come back or whatever. I don't know. Because, you know, he says, I'm going to be your guide. So, to be a guide, you have to know where you're going. So, I'm assuming that Regilio has done it before. Le sue intuizioni e la sua fama, his intuition and his fame, ma anche la sua esperienza di escluso, because he was excluded, obviously. Eh? That Senea was excluded. Why? Because Troy was destroyed. Dalla comunità, com comunione con Dio, with his communion from God, lo rendono agli occhi di Dante il personaggio più adatto ad assumere il ruolo di messaggero della grazia per l'uomo smarrito nella selva oscura. So, fight in the, in the, pers in the person of, da of Virgilio helps Dante hmm, understand his, his situation and uh, encourages him to follow the right path of salvation. Autorevole per la sua sapienza terrena. So he's an authority on earthly wisdom. Ma anche umile, but also humble, per la consapevolezza dei limiti dell'umanità, in knowing the limits of humanity. Quando non è sorretta, when it's not uplifted, by faith, uh, faith that saves you and leads you to God. So Virgilio is an important personality uh, that does this. Now, this is my take. That's why I said I need a few, uh, a few Sundays to talk about. Next time I'll talk about uh, Dante's life and works. And another time we'll look at the, all the sins in, the, in, the, in, in hell and what they mean, etc., and the punishment and alleged del contrapasso, which I've mentioned before. And there's so much more. It's never-ending, honestly. On that note, I'm going to have a drink. Because it's, um, you know, 12 or 2. So my half hour dedicated to Dante is done. Okay, for now. As I said, I have the books... La Divina Commedia, the, the large books, uh, they look like this. Where is it here? I think I've got it here. This is Purgatorio. So when we read this, you know, there are a lot of very, very detailed uh, notes here about the, all sorts of, about the people, the, uh, all the explanations. And then, yeah. It's a lot. And as I said, it's good company. It's good company in, in the third age. People are at home, etc. You know. Now, I've got here two poems from my books. Here, that and that. These are twin texts. On the same page of each book, you find the same poem. The first one is Un dolce pomeriggio. This is from uh, this is my school chapter. Un dolce pomeriggio d'inverno ci sedemmo là nella sala dei professori. Comprai dei cannoli e delle paste tutte italiane. E voi portaste i biscotti, le caramelle e le patatine secche. Ci sedemmo tutti insieme al tavolino sulle poltrone. E Carolina era seduta lì per terra. 
ci scambiammo alcune parole, mentre voi tutti eravate lì, un po' impacciati di quell'atmosfera un po' straniera. Sono queste le prime esperienze di qualcosa nuovo e ce ne sono così poche a scuola. Forse sarebbe meglio vivere insieme per alcuni mesi, per conoscerci meglio i momenti come questo dolce pomeriggio d'inverno. I remember taking the children in, a, in the staff room. <laughs> uh, and uh, we had a little bit of a party there. So it was a sweet afternoon. On a sweet winter afternoon, we sat there in the teacher's lounge room. I bought some cannoli and some real Italian cakes, and you all brought biscuits, lollies, and dried chips. We all sat together around a small table on the couches, and Carolina was seated there on the floor, Caroline. We made some conversation whilst you were all there, a little ill at ease in that somewhat foreign atmosphere. These are the first experiences of something new, and there are so few of these at school. Perhaps it would be better to live together for a few months to get to know each other better in moments like this sweet af winter afternoon. That's why the camps are sort of, uh, they allow some teachers to experience, but then they have to control the kids out of their atmosphere. Uh, you can't compare it to actually living together in a household. And that's why parents really are the real teachers, are really the real teachers of, of their own kids, because they have such a big influence. They live with them every day. Eh? Okay. Campanello di scuola. Thank you, Angela, for the comment. Il campanello suona in un altro periodo comincia. Ci muoviamo a questo suono. Il nostro tempo passa in un ambiente contratto. Contratto. Ci sono dei momenti quando vogliamo volare via per rompere questa monotonia, questa vita di rigidità. Viaggiare attraverso il Nalabo o è forse la savana dell'Africa. Guardare il cielo e le colline da, un po da una montagna di Kathmandu. Bere dell'acqua fresca da una cascata nel Queensland. Viaggiare per le città degli U USA. O potrebbe esserci la possibilità di lavorare in un'attrezzatura marina per l'olio nel Western Australia. O essere il direttore della BHP soltanto per una settimana. O scambiare posto con il primo ministro, è una idea. <ride> cambiare la propria abitudine a volontà, come cambiare i canali del tuo televisore. Questo campanello continua a suonare ogni 50 minuti, precisamente per attrarci di nuovo nel suo lembo. I'll read it in English, I think I wrote this in English anyway. The bells ring, school bell. The bell rings, another period begins. We move to the sand. Our time is spent in an environmental warp. There are times when we want to fly away, to break this monotony, this life of rigidity, to be travelling across the Nullarbor, or as it may be the savannah of Africa, to watch the sky and the hills from a mountain in Kathmandu, to drink fresh water from a cascade in Queensland, to travel the cities of USA. Or could there be a possibility of working on an oil rig in Western Australia? Or be the manager of BHP just for one week? Or exchanging places with the PM? <laughs> Changing your routine at will, like switching the channels of your TV set. This bell continues to ring every 50 minutes precisely to draw us back to its fold. And that's when you are a teacher. Welcome to Ruj Kaito. Good. Uh, RGC, I don't know what that means, but anyway, that's your name, I presume. Okay, so that's, those are the two poems that are from my books. Okay, so it's, uh, the language is easy, accessible. It's not like Dante. <laughs> so that's the difference. Okay, and now as usual, Whenever I get to this stage, let me see. Come on. Um, oh, 
No, no, I have to do what I normally have to do in order to access my information. Okay, let me see. Yes. One and two. Come on. Yes, it's here. So I'm, I'm back. I'm not on holidays anymore. <laughs> but it's great to be here. And so let me start. This is Colin. Here. Wait, let's go. Wait on. There we are. Okay, here we go. That's Colin and his violin. He's a Scotman. Okay, and we're at Angela and Doris Place. There's Angela there. He was very excited to be, you know, they, they never met. They just, that's the first time they meet. <laughs> Looking at two masters. It's a jam session, they don't uh, have notes. <laughs> the notes are in their brains. Let's do it, eh? Hello, Zoraida. There's there music for you from the past. He's going to ride around the world uh, playing his, um, his violin. Unbelievable guy. I'm very emotional about this. Uh, well, never mind. What can I do? I'll give you another one that uh, they are so good, really and truly. Here is another one for you. We're going to go on till 12.30 with, in the company. You follow? No, no, you, it's the other way around this time. Angel, Angel. Angel, segue, lui a te. Lui segue a te questa volta. Non sei tu che devi seguire. You've got to leave there. Come on. Come on. Sì, 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 That's how they work it out. 
Adia. They're talking to each other musically, eh? Well, I'm very emotional this morning with this. And there's more to, to come, of course. And uh, let me choose another one. Uh, I think I'll just go to the big ones, the big contributions here. This one here. It gets better and better as they move along. Too. Rina with the guitar, whoa! Well done, Rina! I've had uh, 30 years of, uh, and more of this type of um, experience which is wonderful for me too. Uh, now that was that. I'll give you one that is a lot longer. Uh, here we go, this one here. Uh, and now I think they do some Italian songs here. There they are. Here. You can see the changes already. Angela. <laughs> was the conductor with his eyes.
Colin absolutely loved the experience. <laughs> I was unbelievable, uh, really and truly. After this, he went, uh, he went away in many countries and uh, all over the place. And here is another one. Uh, I took a lot that night because we were, and Angel's passed away now. So, and Dora, uh, we do the songs, as you know, if you look at um, what I've done uh, with uh, Dante Alighieri in the Inferno, I always put some music from the, from her and some singing. So uh, life continues. It's a, it's like a journey, honestly. It's it's a real journey. Here we go again. This time, let's have a look. There they are, there and there. And they continue. Have a look. Oh, there's a waltz. It should be good. Wow, I'm very emotional this morning. Wow, it's incredible. Let me see, I'm gonna look at, um, there's another one here, a big one. Let's have a look, this one here. Okay, here we go again. Giardino 
Wasn't that marvelous, huh? <laughs> oh my God. Life. And there's more to come, uh, and I'll give you this one here. Oh, Reno's there too, so it's good. Okay, here we go. There's Reno, Colin, and of course, Andrew and Dora. Let's have a look. Oop. Wrong one. A wrong button. This is the button we want. I've never had to worry about the notes. <laughs> My programs are like this music. <laughs>
isn't it marvellous to be able to see these people here in action? And uh, I'm going to stop there uh, for today. This is very emotional for me to see Angela and Dora and uh, Colin there. Uh, yeah, it's been a good day, really. Uh, I don't know whether you've enjoyed it. Uh, I do want to go on with uh, Dante, and I'll give you some more of uh, Colin, Angela and Dora. We'll, I'll, I'll prepare it a little bit better next time. But showing you some of, some of the work. It was a fantastic night with those three, and Rena too. And when Dora had gone for coffee there, that's why she wasn't playing. But anyway, look, thank you very much for those people who come on. It's always a pleasure to have you in my company uh, on a Sunday for Dante. Uh, and, uh, yep, I, I think I've worked it out. I've probably got to Dante Alighieri, Inferno will be around 40, uh, 40 lessons or 40 presentations and then Purgatorio will be the same and Paradiso the same. So I've got plenty to do for the next uh, you know, year ahead. Let's hope that uh, well up there is kind to, to me and uh, uh, that I can complete my journey as well uh, of these things. Uh, there's so much more and so much more we talk about the Italian... Um, lesson on Tuesday, it's, it's always at 11.25 to 12.30. On Tuesday I do Italian lessons, uh, I've done the grammar, now I'm doing the Italian literature, you know, a lot, a lot of different activities to back up the, the learning of Italian uh, and pointing out some of the, uh, some of the people who, who can help you online as well, because there's a lot of people now actually teaching Italian online. That's right. Oh my God! Sorry, I had to uh, had to have a drink. <laughs> and then um, that's the Tuesday. And this all these podcasts uh, they're podcasts. You can listen to them again. Then on Thursday, same time, I do world history. Uh, and at the moment, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, that's interesting. I've done the continents the. The content's all around the first slot, and I'm coming more de in more details, and um, and I point out some of the uh, some of the what is available on television as well. You know, the Rome uh, about Rome about uh, all all of all of the world. Really, it's a question of whether we choose to watch these things or not. And uh, then on Friday, I do French. Spanish, and as a result of me being late on Friday, and last week I also missed because I was going to for my holidays on a Friday. But um, it's lesson I've done lesson eleven there, French, Spanish, and in the f in next this coming week uh, I will use the other half hour uh, to introduce other languages as well, uh, in terms of you know their importance and what can be done and how they can help us. Uh, generally in our daily life. All right, thank you very much on this. Now I'm going to uh, the Puglia Social Club <laughs> uh, with Angela. So, you know, let's let's have a look now. Uh, I think that's the end. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you next time. Ciao from Tom Padula of Tom Padula TV on YouTube and the Insegna Booksellers. Ciao, ciao.